Hi, this is Jackson Rogers, also known as Lenny Agony, and in this video I'm going to show you how I make my ambient occlusion maps using 3D Studio Max and XNormal. I'll be using a method that was shown to me by uh, the concept artist who concepted this weapon on the screen now, who goes by the name of Double Leaf or Bell. You can find his details linked in the comments below this video and the way the way he does this is that he uses a hemisphere to create a bit of a gradient in his ambient occlusion maps and uh, to give you an example this on the screen right now is my normal ambient occlusion bake uh, using the hemisphere I can create more of a, a, gradient, a gradient effect and depending on where the hemisphere is located in your scene you can create various different effects or gradients that can then be composited in Photoshop to uh, create the desired effect that you want. So to get started you're going to need to have your final high poly So your final high poly sculpt uh, in 3D Studio Max, which I have up in front of me here. Um, you'll also need your final low poly with UVs uh, ready to go into game or for baking and your cage file or mesh as well. So what I do at this point with these with these final models is I export them um, through file export export selected and I just do them one at a time. So in this case, you can see I have a bunch of export files, but I'm going to call this one my cage file. Name it whatever you want. And when I'm exporting, I use an OBJ, and for my cage, I use these settings. Uh, most importantly I turn off the texture coordinates and I triangulate, make sure it's triangulated. Then I export my low poly. And I do this mostly the same but I triangulate it and I also export the textual coordinates along with the normals and the smoothing groups. And for my high, I export the same again but without the smoothing groups but I leave it as quads. Uh, at this point you can use those three files that you just exported to create a normal AO map but uh, now you want to create a hemisphere if you want to create the, uh, the separate ones and I do that by just creating a sphere in the in the viewport and you can create this at any various size uh, I did a few tests to get a reasonable effect on the weapon that I'm using as an example um, and this works pretty good. I up the segments up to a huge amount and then I turn it into an editable poly and I just delete half of them and then I select the ones on the bottom half, make sure you have all of them selected, right click in the viewport and flip the normals. This just means that the normals are all facing inwards now and will help direct the light flow on your ambient occlusion. Uh, and then I just reset the X form and collapse my stack. And just to give you an example, I have 
the low poly here centered in the middle of the hemisphere. So I select the hemisphere and then I do the same, I export, export selected, and I call call it hemisphere bottom or whatever. Again as an OBJ file. And I just leave it as quads and turn off the texture coordinates. And export. Uh, you can then create various different lighting effects by just moving it around. So this one will give a different look. And again I export, export selected and I'll just call this one side. I think I used, uh, I think I ended up only using two of these, so, um, you know, but make as many as you want from whatever direction and whatever size to create different maps. Now that I have those exported, I can go to XNormal, so load up XNormal, and you should be presented with a screen like this. Uh, I load in my high poly, so you click on high definition meshes over on the right. Then I right click in this white space below base texture to bake and I do add mesh and then I choose my high poly so you are the high resolution mesh that you exported from max and then I add another mesh and this is where I add the hemisphere meshes so I'll add the you know hemi bottom side and hemisphere top so I just add them all now but I'll turn two of them off so I just get the bake from one of the hemispheres at once and then once I'm through with that bake I can then unselect that one and select another one I'll come back and show you that but uh, for now I only have one of your hemispheres turned on then I go to low definition meshes on the side and I right click in the white box here underneath maximum frontal ray distance and do add meshes and I select the low poly that I exported from max and then I right click on that name and I browse external select browse external cage file and I go down and select my cage file uh, this is just a warning, I just leave it on to remind myself, but okay. Then in baking options, uh, under maps to render, select ambient occlusion and only ambient occlusion for this one, so everything else is unchecked. Uh, and if you select this small green box to the right for the ambient occlusion options, you can see these are the options that I used uh, for these bakes. Uh, this seems to work okay for me. I'm not an expert with them, but um, feel free to use the same. Uh, I then choose the output file directory, so wherever you want to save your baked maps, uh, you can choose it through this little option menu or enter it manually and then name your file. And I also, there's a few, before you do that, there's a few other options that I have on this screen. Uh, it depends on your item for the for the size. Feel free to swizzle, swizzle that around. I always keep on a reasonable amount of edge padding and a bit of aliasing, but it's not really written in stone. And then click on the big right, map button at the bottom. This will probably take a little while depending on how powerful your machine is. Somewhere, you know, 10 to 20 minutes sometimes. And there you have it. Should be, if everything went to plan, you should have a 
baked ambient occlusion map with your directional lighting. Uh, from this point I then go back to my high definition meshes and I uncheck the bottom hemi and I'll go on and do another one and then I'll go back to baking options just to make sure I'll change the name to and then I'll generate another map. I'll, I'll go through and generate all the maps or all the ambient occlusion maps I would usually bake uh, but I'll put them on fast forward so you don't have to wait. And now I'll do a bake with none of the hemispheres attached, only the high poly. And that's uh, pretty much it. So you should now have uh, your ambient occlusion map, which is your standard, and then the ones using your hemispheres, which allow you to direct the lighting within your ambient occlusion and can give you something like these maps here which you can then combine in a number of ways within Photoshop to uh, create a really great kind of AO or base for your textures really I like to start with something a little bit more like that and then when they're applied to your model they work out pretty good too. So here we have just the normal map and then with the ambient occlusion or just one of the bakes that I had and if I update that you can see the, uh, the change in direction to lighting. Anyway, uh, I hope that was a help and if it is please check out the comments on this video or check me out on or my workshop out on steam thanks for watching